Welcome again to Discipleship Empowerment Tip, and this we are working on our third message concerning this whole area of faith, faithful, and faithfulness. I hope that you've been getting a little bit of more insight into this word and doctrine, because it's so important for the believer of Christ to understand what God is wanting to do through these words, and how He is taking us on a journey that we can get to see the bigger picture. And that's what I like about when we study these words, is that we get the bigger picture. Because there is a bigger picture, and I think sometimes the bigger picture was, is what brings balance to the Word, to the doctrine, and to the disciple of Christ. And so I encourage you today that as we continue on, we got a few more nights of we speak about this word faith, and faithful and faithfulness. But tonight we're going to look at it from the point of view of the Holy Spirit through the book of Acts. I titled tonight's message, The Disciples Act of Faith. And I think that's what it's really all about, is how the Holy Spirit is working through our lives by faith. But also there is a teaching process that the Holy Spirit uses us for and takes us through to generate greater steps of faith as we mature in Him and grow in Him. And I want us to see that because I think there's sometimes when people talk about this word faith, they get things a little out of balance. And I think we need to get it back in balance. You know, when I, when I think about the apostles, they were people of faith. And the disciples were men and women of faith. I mean, they had walked with Jesus. They had seen all kinds of marvelous things that Jesus had done. And even in their own midst that they have in the very beginning of part of Acts, they also seen all kinds of miracles. But it was interesting to know that they also faced all kinds of challenges. That even though they had faith, there was still a balance that they had to walk through challenges and, and sufferings and persecution and things like that, which we would say, well, you know, maybe if they just had more faith. But I believe that God wants to give us faith that we can walk through the storms and not just run away from the storm or try to go over top or around. But I think God wants to build faith in us by taking us through the valleys and the challenges and the mountaintops and hilltops because often that's when we grow in the Lord the most is when we go through some of those challenges. And I see that. You know, I mean, Paul was a man of faith, uh, devoted. But when you look at Paul and you and you think about how the imprisonments and the persecutions and the stonings, I mean, one night even the leadership gathered together with them and said, Paul, they're, they're, they're out to get you. They're going to kill you. And so we need to sneak you out of the city and put you in a basket and lower you down over the wall of the city. Now, can you imagine what that, that could have been fairly uh, humiliating and humbling. <laughs> You know, the man of God being, you know, hoisted over a wall, put it into a basket, and lowered down so he could run for his life. But you know, that wasn't because of a lack of faith. That was because I believe also God gives wisdom and knowledge and understanding when to move forward and when to retreat, when to turn right and when to turn left. I believe God is in all of that. And I believe these things that happened to Peter when he was in jail, but even when he was in jail, God did a marvelous thing and, and got him released from jail. You know, and Paul and Barnabas and Silas, all of them, uh, Stephen, there's so many of that names that we could mention that there seems to be uh, a process of growing in faith. Now, you don't have to always completely agree with me. That's okay. But I, as I look through the entire Bible, I see great people of faith having great problems also and getting into all kinds of challenges. And is it because of lack of faith or is it just because of the sin nature, the human nature that we have, and also that we're not yet mature enough in certain areas? Because... I always used to think about it when I was learning the Bible, that we're like ten fingers, as it were. 
And we might be maturing in this one and this one and this one, but we still got to do some maturing in this one, this one, and some of the others. And it's the same thing. There's some areas in your life that you have tremendous faith. But then there's some other areas in your life that you don't. I have faith in the number of areas, but I can tell you that when I go into certain countries, like the country of Myanmar, and I climb up these rickety stairs all the way to the top of some of these towers. Now, Cohen, she's got the faith. She just scoots it all the way up there, and she's up at the top of the tower waving down to me and saying, you scaredy cat, whatever, you know, that she says in, in their Kitchen language. But, you know, when I look at that, I don't have faith in that tower. I don't have faith in those old stairs. And I don't have faith that when I'm standing up there that there isn't going to be an earthquake and that thing falls over. So my faith keeps me on the ground. And that all happens because of the way I think. It has not something that I'm believing less or less uh, strong in the Word of God or my faith in Jesus Christ. But also I believe God uses our brains. And I think just as we see the disciples in the book of Acts, God uses them not only as individuals but as a corporate group to come together in faith to make a decision on what they should do in the will and purposes of God. And so I don't want to get to the place where we start pointing fingers at one another and say, well, it's a lack of faith. Or if you would just have more faith. I mean, I've had that happen to me and said to me many a time concerning my first wife, Irene. People would come up to me and say, well, she's going through what she's going through because of a lack of faith or because there's sin in your life, or because the two of you are in an agreement. That is a bunch of humbug. You know, that is not true. You know, there is faith. You know, that it takes a lot more faith to walk through a valley and just to stand around and sit in a chair and criticize people. You know what I'm saying? I hope you understand that in love. But I've had to walk these things over the years and try to determine where do we find the balance in faith. And I believe the book of Acts helps us with that. And I believe the Holy Spirit is the teacher of that, where he teaches the disciples because he guides, as one of his name, as guide. He's a comforter. He's a teacher. And he comforts, teaches, and guides us in what we should do. And sometimes he guides us and says, stand up and fight like Stephen. Take a stand for Jesus Christ. And sometimes he'll say, you know, maybe it's time to move on. And so as we go into Acts chapter 3, verse 6, we begin to see that there's some preaching in Jerusalem going on there by Peter and John. And while they were sharing the word of God, uh, they come across a lame man. And as they're proclaiming the word of the gospel uh, to the people and the man, this man through faith, you know, he is healed. And we see that in verse 16 where it says, And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him, the word him is capitalized, which means Jesus Christ, has given him the perfect soundness in the presence of all of you. And he goes on and talks about how if we would have this kind of faith, yes, there will be times of healing. But I also know as I went down a little further in verse 19 to get the context a little bit more, it says, he goes on, and Peter and John says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come. Isn't that a wonderful thought? From the presence of the Lord. And so sometimes there can be times of refreshing in the midst of trials, in the midst of struggles. And I have experienced that many, many, many times, and I hope that you can bear witness to that. So there is times of refreshing, even, and it's interesting that even after uh, Peter and John get finished testifying, people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And what happens next? Did they go around and have a hallelujah shout and, and everything was happy-go-lucky? No, chapter 4 says they were arrested and put in prison, <laughs> you know. And they, were char they weren't even charged just because they preached the gospel and were stirring up people. That was enough to put them in prison. Well, as we know, later on, God does some miraculous things here and there. But it's important that we realize that about how faith works. Faith is trying to get us to grow more in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. See, God's end goal for us 
is to make us more like Jesus. That's the end goal. Christ went through challenges, persecution. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to put him to death. And eventually they did hang him on the cross. And even some people challenged him and said, you know, I thought you were God. And he challenged them back and said, you know, if you want, I could call 10,000 angels and wipe all of you off the face of the earth if that's what you want. But that's not what God's will is. God's will is for me to walk through this valley, through this challenge, so I can bring grace and mercy, not only to you as Gentiles, but to the, or to you as Jews, but also to the Gentiles in the greatest parts of the world. And so he had faith by what he was doing was going to cause the gospel to spread. And I believe that all the disciples, they had faith in believing that what they were doing was going to cause the gospel to spread. Not themselves to get more plentiful or more prosper, but that the gospel would spread. That God would give them faith through the power of the Holy Spirit for what reason? So that the gospel would spread. Amen? Can you receive that? And so in chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And the sayings pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit. They were picking out deacons here. To go out and help to minister to the widows and to the poor and, and to the uh, people that needed help and encouragement. And so they had picked out several of them. But one of them, they said, as they talked about Stephen, in fact, all of them were men who were of faith and filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, we know even within that short time from Acts chapter 6 to Acts chapter 7, Stephen then proclaims what? the gospel in faith and takes a stand up for the gospel in faith and what happens he gets dragged out of the city because of his faith in the gospel and is stoned and now is where is he he's with our heavenly father why because of his faith <laughs> are you getting it yet and so we need to see the balance between this whole idea so we see Peter and John. Yes, they stepped out and preached in faith. We have Stephen who preaches in faith. But look what, what some of the results were. But they were still, it wasn't because of a lack of faith that they had these things happen to them. It was because of great faith that they had in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so then we come to Paul. Paul chapter 14. He goes on and says, and uh, 14 verse 9, where he says, this man heard Paul speaking and observing him identified, seeing that he had faith to be healed. And so there was this man, this crippled. And when Paul was looking at him and talking and talking in the crowd and saw that this man had faith, this man had faith to believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the healer of Jesus Christ, Jesus was the anointed one, that if we would just have faith in him, that he would be healed. And so Paul joining his faith with this crippled man's faith, that man was healed. Now, were all cripples healed when they came together like that? No, but God was doing something specific according to his will. And he was beginning to establish his church. And then as we move on into 1421, uh, or actually it's 22, and he strengthened the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in their faith and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of heaven. I bet you that's not a verse that many of us have underlined. That when we walk in faith, strong in faith, we're going to have many tribulations. It's in the same verse. I didn't write it. That's what it says. That's what happens when we take a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and praise the Lord for it. It's worth it all. It's worth it all because Jesus is alive. He is setting the captive free. He is sitting at the right hand of Father interceding on behalf of us so that he can send forth the Holy Spirit to give us strength and power and ability to be able to do what? To preach the gospel. That's what the book of Acts is all about. It's the acts of the Holy Spirit going forth, spreading out the gospel so that the church of Jesus Christ can be established. 
Well, in 1427, we read a little bit more, just further on in this chapter. Now when they had come and gathered their church together, they reported all the good that God had done with them, and that he had opened the doors of faith to the Gentiles. Now there's an amazing thought, where we see that faith also opens doors of faith. And I believe sometimes that happens to us as disciples and individuals. There is times when we step out in faith that that faith, that little seed of faith, opens another door of faith so we can walk through it and it may open another. I have had that happen to my in my life a thousand times probably. Without exaggeration, when I stepped out in faith, God opened up another door of faith. And as I walked through that, he opened another door of faith. But it was a process of growing in our Lord Jesus Christ and having faith in him. He goes on in Acts chapter 15, verse 9. And it says, And made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And he's talking about to the Jerusalem council, Paul is, and saying, you know, there was an issue there. And the issue was, how come these Gentiles, who hardly know anything about God, they trust in Jesus Christ, and he fills them with this Holy Spirit? Well, that's the unction of the Holy Spirit. They were drawn by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke into them, touched their hearts. They have faith to try to believe what they knew at that point. And they became believers in Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? In Acts chapter 16, verse 5. Now we have Timothy and Paul and Silvanus, or Silas, I should say. So the church was strengthened and strengthened in their faith and increased in number daily. So here. You know, the church was going through turmoil. I mean, they were moving from the things of this world, from the gods of this world, the idols of this world. They were accepting Jesus Christ. They were taking a stand in faith. And it was costing them with their families, with their children, with their relatives, everything like that. But through it all, what did this faith do? Did it give them more provisions? No, what it gave them is more strength. See, I believe that the purpose of faith is to help us to walk strong in our Lord Jesus Christ. To, to be able to incorporate His grace, His mercy, His goodness, that the fruit of the Spirit. He wants us to have faith to allow the fruit of the Spirit to flow through us. He wants us to have faith so that the gifts of the Spirit will activate through us. He wants us to have faith so that the church of the Spirit will be planted and grow in faith. These, I believe, what the Holy Spirit is trying to say. And then again in Acts uh, chapter 16, verse 15, we have the story of Lydia. It says, And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded them. So, you know, what happened? Her and her household gave their lives to Jesus Christ. But because they were most likely Gentiles, you know, the Jews, they knew that Jews just didn't come to their house for food and that. But she persuaded them, the Bible said, to come. After she was baptized, she said, you know, I want to have fellowship with you guys. Come to our house. I have faith to believe that it's all okay. And, of course, they come and they spend time at her house. Then over in Acts chapter 20, verse 21, it says, Testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I believe it's all about. And again, it goes on and he says, And see now that I abound in the Spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying, that the chains and tribulations await me. Paul had faith to go to the city, even though he knew what was ahead for him. Even though he knew that there was some challenge. So are you seeing a little bit different picture concerning this whole idea of faith? Faith, again, is something that comes about so that it can help us to walk out the gospel of Jesus Christ. We get Paul in front of Felix. 
And now Paul is is uh, been in house arrest and in Rome. And he comes before Felix and uh, Drusilla was Jewish, his wife. And he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Jesus Christ. So when Paul comes, he didn't talk about the faith that he had or what the faith did in his life. He talked about what the faith was in Jesus Christ. And he almost persuaded him. But Felix, you know, kind of, you know, he wanted to listen, but he didn't want to yet have faith in Jesus Christ. And so it was important that we realize how this faith was beginning. And then later on, Paul gives a testimony at the very end of Acts, or very close to anyway, chapter 26. And he gives an account about what the Lord Jesus Christ said to him when he went from being Saul to being Paul when he experienced that wonderful conversion. And we see in Acts where it's talking about Jesus, what Jesus has said. He's giving testimony. This is what Jesus said. My life was changed because Jesus spoke to me, Paul said. And this is how he spoke to me. And I believe he was the Messiah. I had faith to believe he was the Messiah. And because of that, I went out from place to place presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though I didn't have a job sometimes, even though I didn't have money, even though I didn't have food, sometimes I had to work. All the negative things, he said, I still had faith in Jesus Christ because he said to him, he says, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So Jesus was saying to Paul, Paul, you're going to go out and I'm going to use you to bring about a teaching and preaching about faith. But the faith has got to be bound up in Jesus Christ and his precious blood, his shed blood. That's where our faith is becomes anchored not in things not in possessions not what we think we deserve or anything like that you know what we deserve is death we deserve because we were raised and we were born in trespasses and sins we were guilty already condemned to death but because of our simple faith in jesus christ we can now become a child of god by faith we become joint heirs by faith. And out of that, we become servants by faith. And then we go out and proclaim the gospel by faith. I hope we're all getting it. But that's what it's all about. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is to empower me and my faith journey in Christ Jesus. That's what it's all about. So when we look at the book of Acts, it's, yes, it's an acts of faith, act of faith of the Holy Spirit working through the disciples and the church. Did you get it? It's an act of faith. The book of Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit who is acting out in people's lives by faith. You know, faith comes from where? It comes from the Father, comes from the Son, and comes through the Holy Spirit. And they are acting out faith on our behalf so that we can act out faith on their behalf. Isn't that an amazing thing? So faith is moving us forward in action under the power of the Holy Spirit. And to me, faith is an act of faith where we need to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to work through us. And so today, as we've focused on this word of faith in the book of Acts, I hope that you've seen it in a little bit of a different way, that faith is, is trusting Faith is getting to the place where we're obedient and we trust, we believe, and whatever God calls us to do, we will do. And I believe whatever valley he calls us to walk through, he will help us to empower us to walk through it. Amen? That's what real genuine faith is. It's not saying, this is what you owe me, Lord. It's faith saying, Lord... Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for moving in my life. And now thank you for helping my faith to grow, to trust in you, that I too can go out as a disciple of Christ and proclaim 
and proclaim the gospel just like the apostles just like all the disciples whether they were men and women they went out and in faith no matter what what's going to happen to them in faith they proclaim the gospel that's what we need to have faith for that's what we need to pray god give us more faith to proclaim your word give us more faith to proclaim your word O oh lord amen that's what we need to have and I'm praying tonight that as we've looked at this word and as we go to prayer now, that we're going to ask the Lord, oh God, build stronger faith in us. Not so that we can get what we want, but that we can be able to do what your will is, what your divine purpose for my life is. And that's what I'm asking you to do, oh God. Help me to have faith to walk out your will in my life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful word of faith and faithful and faithfulness that we see throughout the book of Acts, where it's the acts of the Holy Spirit causing the disciples and the apostles and the believers in you to trust in you and not only to trust in you, but to go from place to place, to take a stand, to pull down the idols, to end up in prison, to end up in even martyrdom. But Lord, that we would have the faith to walk out the, your purpose and your will for our lives. And so we thank you for the testimony of Acts. And we thank you for the testimony of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, O oh God, for how these testimonies build faith in us. So that we too may walk as you have called us to walk in this our journey here on earth. But we just give you thanks now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you continue to walk in your journey of faith. And may God continue to give you much strength, much power, much ability, not in who you are, but in who he is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you again tomorrow, Lord willing. Bye-bye.